What's going on everyone? Super quick intro. We have two vehicles in this clip, this portion, this video, whatever you like to call it. We have a Miata being tuned on the dyno. I thought I got an intro clip of it, but I guess I didn't. So you're gonna kind of just be thrown into that. The other one's gonna be an update on the random misfire uh, that we that I covered in the last video. So that's part two segment. Hope you enjoy. So I'm pulling out the spark plugs. Um, vehicle has like a rough start and it's um you give it some throttle it's not running decently and everything is set up how it should be uh the customer did state that the spark plugs were new but i am pulling them out just to look at them um they are not only soaked in fuel and oil and this thing hasn't been running that long um what is really weird i don't know if i've ever seen this and the car's been inside but this spark plug, if you look where it's sitting too, it's, it's dripping like wet. And, and the car's been running inside. The, it, it hasn't gone outside since it's been running. It's uh, I'm trying to see if it actually, I mean, you, you can see it nonetheless. Um, weird. Um, on top of that, uh, you know, the, the threads are more so oily um, which is always a concern I'm trying to sit where there's light so you can actually see the glare off of it um, it's just not fuel alone it is also oil so we're gonna see um, he did say the car was ready for the dyno he did a boost leak test on it as well um, I'm gonna put the new set of spark plugs in the car too overall is just it's also dripping like water so if you look over here at the puddle that it formed, and then on the wing itself, we uh, had to open the trunk to get his other spark plugs. I, I, I'm not kidding either. The wing was like dripping water for at least like 10 minutes, um, if not longer. So we'll see what's, uh, what's going on. I got the, uh, I'm going to get my wide band hooked up. I can't hook it up. Uh... What I was going to say is I'm going to hook my wideband here. Now this sensor is, it looks like a wideband sensor that he had possibly tied into the computer. Um, if we were able to retain closed loop, it would be nice in a sense, but he has one other spot for an O2 sensor down below. And when I took it out to put my sensor in, the hole's not big enough. Um, I think the one down below is kind of like a narrow band sensor. I, I think, I don't know, but the, the tip... The tip on a wide band's a lot fatter, so it won't fit. So I'm gonna hook mine directly right up to here. I don't want it coming out the exhaust in this one. Uh, he's got a lot of welds. He's got a couple clamps in the exhaust, so I want to make sure we're not getting any leaks. Um, let's see what's going on. So the vehicle is now heat soaked, and it will not restart. And at this point of the tune and where I'm at, it should fire right back up. Uh, I did notice that there's some kind of JB weld or some type of epoxy, I should have said, on that intake manifold weld. So that's not reassuring. Um, that shouldn't be causing the no start, though. Um, I have noticed, too, when the key is in the on position, engine off, the throttle body just freaks out. It's like opening and closing super quickly. So I don't know what's going on in that aspect. Um, it is being tuned on, too. I don't think I mentioned uh, Motorsports Electronics. Uh, I've tuned this car prior. Um, I don't know. Uh, I will also say that it is hitting boost cut almost instantly. And there's a big difference between when a car is boost creeping in a sense, and it takes a second to maybe hit the boost cut that I have set. Uh, this one's happening so quickly. Um, I noticed that his boost solenoid is not hooked up the conventional way for an external wastegate. Let me walk over there and show you really, really quickly. So normally if you have an internal wastegate, this is how it's ran. Um, I'm not saying this can't work. I'm just basically saying this is not the conventional way. I don't know if it's causing an issue. I have personally not seen an external wastegate hooked up this way. And he has the one hose going to the turbo, and then the other one's going to the side of the wastegate, which you're not going to be able to see. Um, you may be able to see down here. It 
car is still hot, so I'm not trying to burn myself or melt my phone. I don't know. I don't know if that's what's going on either. Um, I'm going to let the car cool down, see if it wants to fire back up, and then I'll be back. I'll also add during the whole tuning process, and I'll try to get a clip after this that will show the smoking. The vehicle smokes a good amount. It's um, to a point where it's almost hard to breathe when you're on the side of the dyno. Um, I don't think you can really, you can't really pick it up right now because um, it's picking up the light more so. Um, I'll see if I can get it in the video. Definitely not good though. You have to remember the oxygen sensor, it, it's, the, it, it's going through the oxygen sensor. So if it's smoking a fair amount, we could get wrong readings as well. Um, on top of, you know, it's going to want to ruin my oxygen sensor as well on the dyno uh, quicker than normal. So uh, it is what it is. Um, I, I don't know what to say. Okay, so it's the next day, nice and cold. I don't know if you can hear this. I'll get underneath the hood really quick. That's the throttle body, if you can hear that. It almost sounds like a, a door is creaking. Like you ever get a, if you live in an older house and it's super windy, you can hear like the windows and the door kind of creaking. That's what it almost sounds like. But I'm more curious and see if this thing's gonna start up now when it's cold. So it starts up fairly decently when it's cold. And as I said, I want, oh, didn't mean that. I'm gonna walk out here really quick so you can hear what's going on with the throttle body as well. So um, let me turn the key off, get a little update here. Okay, so I spoke to, I, I think it's the, the owner of the Miata, I don't know though, because we're dealing with like two different people here. Um, and the car was here previously, you know, so we were talking back and forth. It almost sounded like he knew that there was gonna be some issues and um, now, you know, he, he was, he was ex seemed excited to actually work on it and fix it. So um, he's got all that info. He's gonna take it home and, and do whatever he wants with it. Uh, he did inform me a little bit more too about that throttle body noise and whatnot. So. We'll see. If it comes back, I'll capture some videos of it, do exactly what I did before, and we'll go from there. Um, I will add to, I don't know if there's going to be a video before this, just the intro, probably. But if not, um, you can watch the part one video. I'll link it down below. Um, we are at, so I told the tech to come and get me when we get to number two. He's done number one. One was out of spec, and cylinder two, and one was, one was fairly out of spec. Cylinder two, way out of spec. It is super tight. We can't even fit a feeler gauge in there. So I'm gonna let him get back to work. We have a very, very busy day today. Um, I wanna get out of his hair. Um, he just walked away because he knew I was doing a video. And I'm gonna get him back in here so he can work on it. But let me come back and let me explain something to you of what could be happening in a sense if your valves are too tight. and. You know, this is going to be fairly for the newer people that have not, never done a valve adjustment or more so kind of don't know how the inners work on an engine. So I wanted to get another clip in between here showing you guys some intake and exhaust valves, but I didn't have a chance uh, this week at the shop. What I will add is what we're doing here is we're doing a valve lash. And don't get distracted by the two cows behind me. We're doing a valve lash. And what I recommend is if you have an older vehicle with some mileage on it, and you don't know if a valve lash has ever been done, it's highly encouraged to do it. It's, it's routine maintenance. Now, why we think this could possibly cause me, causing a random misfire is if your valve lash is set too tight or too loose, well, the intake or the exhaust valve can't do the job that it needs to do. Either fully intake in the air or fully exit, exhaust the air. 
Now what you also have to keep in mind is this can change as the engine warms up. So metal expands. So if you ever needed a valve lash done, let's say you call our shop, the car has to be 110% cold. Um, you know, for a valve lash, it's best to drop off the night before and then we could do it the next day. Or if you could drop it off super early in the morning and it also, you know, it all depends on how much you're driving. If you got to drive an hour to get here, you know, the car is going to heat soak a lot more. But seeing how number two was out of spec, we're hoping this ultimately fixes the problem, but he's going to have to cycle it a little bit more. And well, you'll see the ending clip of why we couldn't actually drive it. So keep on watching. Okay, so we're doing a leak down test. Um, I have to look at the RO, but I believe the customer wanted the leak down test done, but not the compression. He said he did the compression test, if I recall correctly, keeping in mind it's been over the weekend. Um, I'm doing the compression test at no charge to him because I want to see how accurate his numbers were to our numbers. But look what we just found out. Let me position myself because I want one shot at this. Uh, go ahead and crank it. One more time. Okay. Okay, so you see how the starter's sparking on the outside? Well, here's the thing you also don't, I didn't mention. Customer stated he has a fuel leak at the fuel filter and we can smell it inside the bay. We're gonna pretty much stop and put all hold, hold on this right now because the last thing we need is cranking it and having that spark light up this car. I forgot to get the info before I got on video, but on top of the clutch issue that he had, making it almost undrivable, we did not fix the fuel leak. He did not want that taken care of. So in that case, for obvious reasons, we're not gonna test drive your vehicle with a fuel leak. Um, on top of that, the leak down numbers, cylinder one and two, if I recall off the top of my head correctly, one and two were, uh, they had a little leakage, three and four had moderate. So, you know, as I was saying in the video, we're thinking it was cylinder number two because of that check engine light that we saw. We're hoping that the valve lash fixed it. If it doesn't and the check engine light comes back on, then we're gonna give him the next probable cause that we think it could be. We start with that, we give him a price, and we go from there. So that's just a little update. I don't have much more after that. Um, what you saw in the clips is what I took. I found those to be the most important in a sense, and you know, that's it. So as I always say, thanks for liking. Please share, it helps, comment down below. And if you want to see me cover something specific, let me know as well.